Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, November 27th, 2022. What's 23? Sorry, 23. I've been fucking that up all year. I mean, Jesus Christ, by the time I realize it's 23, it's going to be 24. That's going to be a great Boston year. Oh, my God. Can you believe it's 2024? Do you know there's people in Massachusetts? They say FOA. F-O-U dash W-A-H. FOA. How old's your niece? Oh, my God. She's already FOA. You want to get a pizza? Um... (laughs) Oh, why do I always do that? You know, because I miss it back there. But I will tell you, I absolutely love Los Angeles, especially this time of year when it gets cold out and the Santa Ana winds come blowing in from across the desert, blowing out all the homeless vets that you cheered at a football game. And then they lived under a bridge too close to your fucking house. And you called your local politician and said, get him the fuck out of here. But he did it and do do do. They never talk about the back end of the military career. You know, after the NFL charges them for a commercial, we all like, oh, thank you for your service and all that shit. When they're homeless, where are we? Huh? Driving by, huh, with your fucking Yeti hanging out the window because your your, your personal trainer told you to drink more water? To flush the fucking Botox out of your ass that you had bleached? Is that what we're doing out here? Um, Yes, we are, but it's also, it's a great time of year. (laughs) It's a great time of year to be out here. Um... You know, my tour is done, and uh, I went to the cash show today. You know, it's funny. The NFL, the amount of games the NFL had spread out this weekend really fucking pissed me off. It just really fucking pissed me off, okay? Football's for Sunday. You got Monday night. Now, oh, now we got fucking Thursday, and you're trying to take Friday. Friday. So I got the hiccups. I just had some leftover um, Thanksgiving for the, let's see, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, third day in a row, and then I throw it out Monday. My wife's fucking hovering over me going, I don't know, that was made on like Thursday. I'm like, it's Thursday, it's fine, it's fine. All right, stop hovering over this masterpiece. All right, I got the mashed potatoes right next to the stuffing. Mashed potatoes go on top of the stuffing, gravy goes over the top because they both take it well. Next to it is I have the cranberries. The cranberries are in between the turkey and the side dishes, okay? Mac and cheese is on the other side of the stuffing and the gravy. Then you got your greens coming around to meet the fucking turkey, and then you got your piece of bread or whatever the fuck you want in the middle, okay? I have a system. This isn't my first fucking rodeo, okay? Um, anyway, uh, yeah, the fucking NFL. It's like, what are you doing to me? You're gonna have three fucking games on Thursday. You can have one on Friday, you can have the rest of the games on Sunday and then one more on Monday. It's like, I'd like to see my kids grow up. Can you put the crack pipe down for a fucking day? And in between that, in between that, we had college football, the biggest games of the regular season. This weekend, I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm lucky I still know my fucking name. Now, the old me... The old Billy, old Billy Whiskers, right? The younger me. <laughs> Billy Whiskers, I like that. The young, oh, I'm on one. I'm fucking on one. Four days of Thanksgiving, feeling good. Um, the old me, I would have fucking sat there and, you know, barely paid attention to relatives and I would have fucking sat through three fucking games. Fuck you, NFL. I'm not fucking watching three football games on Thanksgiving. Jesus fucking Christ. Give me one good fucking game. I don't need to watch. I'm not. You're taking my whole fucking day, you cunts. Trying to take my whole fucking week. 
You know what they are? The NFL and the fucking NBA, they're like that fucking woman that wants all your time. They can't accept the fact that you got friends that you want to hang out with one night on the weekend. You hanging out with your friends tomorrow night? But we scheduled a doubleheader on Friday. Yeah, fuck you, bitch. I'm not watching it. I'm not missing my kids growing up because you're going to fucking, you got 32 fucking teams and you're going to spread them all out. Right? Like one of those mentally ill geniuses, you know, they can't fucking hold down a job, but they can do the math, you know, that figures out how to do something. I don't know. I'm too stupid to do the right. They're a beautiful mind. At least that's what Hollywood taught me. There's people out there that are special and they have beautiful minds. And Hollywood loves to make movies about them. You know, beautiful minds that play pianos, that figure out physics, that fucking count matches in fucking Las Vegas. They've been doing it forever. It's, it's a well-worn, it's, it's literally a genre. You know, to make you stop and think. The Hollywood wants you to stop and think about how you treat people with special needs while they're out here in their infinity pools with barely legal women with fucking blow and and, and, whatever, AI technology. (laughs) Who the fuck are you to make a movie that I'm supposed to learn something from? Why don't you watch your own fucking movies? You ever think of doing that? Um, One of my favorite things in the world, the Hollywood lecture. Oh, by all means, Hollywood. Sports integrated 70 fucking years ago. Hollywood still looks like baseball in like 1962. Um, <laughs> every award season, someone's going to go up there and give the, every, all the other states a lecture. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so I just decided today, like I watched a football game on Thanksgiving. I watched the second half of the Lions and the uh, the Bears, and then I watched the Dolphins, what was it, Jets game, whatever, whoever the fuck they play. I can't even keep track of it. It's too much for me. All right? And then on Saturday, I watched uh, Hail to the Victors, Valiant, Hail to the Cockpit Heroes, Hail, Hail to Michigan, Fuck you, Ohio State. Um, I watched the Michigan uh, Wolverines um, win the game. I would not say that they they kicked their ass. They did not. I would say I was very impressed with the quarterback of Ohio State, and I was underwhelmed with the corners uh, on Michigan, man. I know they had a couple of picks. You know, one was the end when he had to force and make a play. So, you know, that's a mulligan. They had one fucking pick, but, I, you know, dropped another one. And Jesus Christ, how many fucking times... Did they get burned deep in that game? That was a little uh, a little unsettling. So I'm happy, but I am happy they beat us three years in a row. All right? Nothing to fucking brag about. Ohio State beat us seven times in a fucking row. So, you know. And I've been so busy this year, I didn't even realize LSU was having a great fucking year and their quarterback's like a Heisman Trophy winner. You know why that is? You know why that is, guys? I guess maybe I'm working too much. Maybe I'm trying to be too involved as a father. You know when people do that? Oh, you, you know, you're excited about, oh, did you check out fucking blah, blah, blah? No, I was at a soup kitchen ladling out broth for homeless people. No, oh, Jesus, sorry. Okay, you know, even Jesus got a hooker on one day, right? Can, can I fucking, can I go see Fast and the Furious Part 12? Aren't I allowed to do that? What about my Thanksgiving? So anyway, I watched that game and I watched the fucking Alabama Auburn game, and I'm telling you right now, there is an unwritten fucking rule. Like back in the day, if the Canadians were down, uh, back in the day when they were just, oh my God, it's the fucking Canadians, right? The, the, they just had to go on the power play. The, the officiating crew on a home game in the forum was required to put the Canadians on the power play to give them a chance to tie it up. That's the kind of pull they had. Now, I'm not saying Alabama did any sort of fuckery. We all know that that happens in the springtime, right? When they, when they run around the South with bags of cocaine, whores, and fucking T-top Corvettes trying to get their fucking recruits. We all know that. 
okay? There's no reason for Saban to still have a fanny pack. We know what's in it. Um, no, there's like this unwritten fucking rule that Alabama cannot have two losses. Like watching teams try to give Alabama their second loss of the year. You know what that's like? That was like me trying to beat up my older brother. The amount of times I had him beat, but psychologically he just had it over me and I would still fucking lose. And then I would think afterwards, like, why didn't I keep fucking going? I should have brought the house. Instead, I rushed two. Jesus fucking Christ. They fucking stop him with three and a half minutes to go. They're fucking, what are they, up by 10? Are they up by seven or whatever? They kick the ball back to him. The fucking kid gives a fair catch, falls on his ass and drops the ball and gives Alabama the ball back. Now, I'm not saying that if he didn't do that, they would have won the fucking game. Who knows? They could have gone three and out, only burned off, you know, fucking 40 seconds off the clock. Alabama could have got it back. So anyways, they drive down the fucking field. They get a touchdown. All right, now Auburn's only up by three. They get the fucking ball back. You know, they get a couple of first. I don't know what the fuck happened. It's just all going together with Michigan's final drive. Keep getting those first downs and running the ball down their throats like fucking the Big Ten football is. They fucking get, they ended up giving the ball back to to Alabama. It's third and goal. They take like a 20-yard fucking sack. They're all the way back to like the 35 yard line or something final play of the game what do they do they rush two the guy's just standing back there for like a half a minute long enough for the cops to trace a fucking phone call and then he finds this kid in the back of the fucking end zone I just bursted out laughing going like you just can't do it it's illegal although I will tell you who's gonna give them damn check and wrong sweet damn goddamn Georgia Bulldogs that's going to be a fucking game. That is going to be a fucking game. I, oh, wait a minute. Are they not in that game? Are they in that game? I don't know how it works. They sort of split the thing up. Like, who goes to the fucking championship game? Is Alabama out in... Are they in the SEC West? I, I, can't, I can't keep fucking track of it anymore. So anyway, so I did that on Saturday. So on Sunday, what am I going to do now? Am I going to fucking... Oh, and by the way, I've been watching a bunch of episodes of Kojak which my son loves and my daughter doesn't like it. She doesn't like shows where people go to sleep and then they go to heaven. That's her way of saying dying. So I'm like, all right, I, I get that. But my son, he he loves it. You know, there's cars, there's fucking good looking women, you know, there's guns and shit. He just, he loves it. I'll tell you this. I got to get the name of the actress on uh, season season five, episode one absolute stunner uh she plays an undercover cop or whatever i told you this shit dude she's a scene she fucking she's like uh she's a dancer and a model so she's got this gorgeous body sick ass dress that she's wearing she comes out of the elevator she walks by two porsches and then gets into a silver uh ferrari denali you know there's some gunplay too in the middle of that. And there's a fucking AMC pacer. And then next to that is like a fucking yellow station wagon. I sent the clip to Dean Del Rey. He goes, dude, did you see the chopper in the background? I missed that. Like Kojak, the fucking cars are just second to none. So I've been watching all that. So today I decided, you know, I'd go to the car show and bring my daughter. Um, I miss it every year. And it was something, the last time I went to the car show, if you can believe it, was like fucking 1982 or 83. Um, we used to go to some sort of convention center, you know. I remember we used to try to talk my dad into buying like a van. This is when, like, this is how long ago, like when custom vans were out. These things were fucking sick, right? They had like, you know, it's a typical van, but then they, they vans were always just like, just shit on the inside. It was for like working people. It was right when they started to make, was the beginning. I would say the van was sort of the first luxury SUV, is when people started hooking up vans. So the regular hot rod people started doing it themselves. And then um, 
these fucking creeps, right? They fucking, you know, they had like two bucket seats and like a water bed in the back. And then they would have like fucking carpet going from the floor up the walls and the ceiling and all that. Lava lamp and all of that shit back there, you know? Or so the legend goes. So then after a while, you know, these things become cool. And then the big three decide to start making them. And I remember they had like this fucking, like a Chevy, a Chevy one before they had that space age looking front end in the late eighties. It was sort of the square body front end. And, uh, it had like, I think that had the two chairs up front, four captain's chairs, which was just the ultimate in luxury. I think the interior was velour, which were like, Oh my God, it's so plush and fancy. And then in the back away in the back was like a bench seat. And we begged my dad to buy that. (laughs) <laughs> he said, oh, you know, I'll think about it. like, come on. <laughs> Why can't you just do this? This would be fucking awesome. Why do we always got to get a sensible car? This doesn't make any sense. That's why it's fucking awesome. You know what one of the best things to buy is? Is when you're looking at buying something and then the person next to you is going, I mean, what are, what are you going to do with that? I mean, that right there, you know you're buying some fucking cool shit. You got room for that? Don't you already have one of those? All of those questions. You know what that means in the United States of America? Buy it! <laughs> oh, just once. Just once. Can you buy the custom van so we can go to church with fucking smiles on our face while everyone looks at you like you're dealing coke? Um, I get why my dad didn't buy that fucking thing. I get it. Oh, man, that thing was fucking sick. And then Toyota had one. Volkswagen had one, you know. We were pushing hard for the vans that year. And I remember the last year I went to a car show. This is how long ago it was. The Pontiac Fiero came out. And we were all like, oh, my God. It's so sporty, right? Remember when they used to call cars sporty? Do you know when that came out? Right around the catalytic converter. When all of a sudden an Oldsmobile Cutlass 442 had fucking 190 horsepower. Couldn't get out of its own fucking way, right? But it still had the 442 uh, I guess four grand. The first four stood for four grand. <laughs> four tires and two jerk offs is all you could put in it, or it can't go up a hill. I think that's what four four two started to mean, as opposed to I think it used to mean four barrel, four speed, posi rear end. There's sort of a debate about that. Um, and as much as I'm a Ford guy, and as much as I like the Lincoln Continentals in the late 40s, and that one from Entourage. I mean, Entourage kind of made it a little bit of a hacky car because it was such a hit show, and then, then everybody like, started looking at it like it was the Entourage car. It's like, no, this is the car JFK got his fucking whacked in. Okay, that's what this is. Okay? Um, this was a pimp car back in the day. Pimps drove these fucking things. Gangsters drove these fucking things. Um... Having said that, I love that car, and I thought it was the perfect car for fucking Entourage. Um, and I got to be honest with you, one of the last shows with a cool car. When I was growing up, every show, you know, the guy, you know, the lead had to have a cool fucking car, and he had to have his own fucking car. He couldn't have a car that was already on another series. You had to have your own unique car that said something. Like, you knew who the fucking character was by the car that he pulled up in. Those days are gone because every car is gray, white, black. I don't know. Occasionally there's a fucking red. I feel like colors are starting to come back. So anyway, I go to the, we go to the car show. And um, it was funny, man. Like uh, Porsche wasn't there. BMW, Audi, all the fucking high-end German shit wasn't there. Jaguar wasn't there. It's just the fucking internet's just killing this shit. Like they used Mercedes. None of that shit was there. But they had all the Fords, and, you know, I'm a Ford guy. I fucking love the Fords. You know, they had all these, this fucking Ford merch. It's like, why can't you just have the Ford logo? I don't need Ford built Ford tough. I don't need Ford Lightning. Just that blue and white fucking logo with the oval thing around it. Can't, can't you just do that? Is that asking too much? 
Um, anyway, so we, we go in there and a uh, couple of things they had that were fucking wild. They're going to have a baby raptor. So you know you got the raptor, right? Now they have the Ford Ranger. Is that a fucking Ford Ranger? They got the Ford Ranger Raptor. And then they had the Ford Bronco Raptor. And I was I was there with my daughter and Dean Del Rey, and there was this one that was just this sick fucking color. It was sort of a gold and a brown, but they put all these weird stickers on it and shit. And Dean was going, I'd buy this and just put heat to those stickers and take them off and no one would know this a raptor until they looked at the fucking hood scoop and I was like that's a fucking cool idea so they had that they had a Mustang that was a six speed standard transmission then they had this sick one that was a Mustang GTD I want to say 300 grand and I'm sitting there going like you're gonna find some fucking jerk off to pay 300 grand for a Mustang you can buy a fucking Ford GT for that you can buy a Ferrari for that what is this thing doing and he's like it's a thousand horsepower it's all carbon fiber and all about it was basically a track car um I don't know how many that they're gonna make but out of all of those you know I'm not the biggest Mustang guy I was when I was younger but I like the uh what is it? Is it the... I always, I always get it confused. Is it the Ford Falcon or, or is it the Ford uh, uh, Fairline? It's the same Mustang chassis. It's the one the guy from uh, Fast and Loud had um, that he raced, the mechanic, put the black hood on it and they forgot to fucking bolt it down and it went flying over it. That car. I like that one. Um, but I will tell you, I'm, I'm a sucker for anything that's still standard transmission i hate the fucking paddles but anyways we checked those out those were cool um and then there's this new kind of car that my wife had actually ridden in when she had a gig in in miami i think and it was uh what's it called lucid their high-end one things are fucking sick and they're all electric so they're fast as shit and it has like, the range is like 518 miles. And they have a super fast charger. All of that shit, like, there's a lot of like, you know what's amazing is, is the amount of fucking misinformation about electric cars. There's a video on fucking Instagram where the guy's like going, this is a solution. Gas can, but look at that. Every charge is full. And look at this line of electric cars. These people can't go home. It's like 20 fucking cars. It's like, where the fuck is that? When the fuck does that ever happen? The fuck out of here. Here's the real deal. You fucking buy a Tesla. They give you a home charger. And you just plug it in like your phone at night. That's it. And then you're good for the day. Good. You're good for the day. Unless you're fucking driving, I don't know, to Albuquerque. Then yeah, you gotta fucking pull over. Who gives a fuck? You're still not paying for gas the whole fucking way. It's it's free. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little bit longer. It's not gonna be like that. It's just gonna get it's gonna go faster and faster. And this fucking bullshit about electric cars, because I love a gas combustion engine. I can't get myself to buy an electric car. I like them. I ride drive my wife's car. It's just not, it's it's I don't I'm I, I like hearing the engine. I just like hearing it. I like hearing the sound of, you know, the fucking, the thing doing the job. I just, I like that, right? The electric one, the speed is fucking amazing. You know, they don't leave any stains in the driveway. There's no grease, no nothing, no nothing, no dripping, no nothing, right? I don't mind, I, you know, it's just not for me. <clears throat> but I wouldn't sit there and be like, you fucking stupid fucking electric cars. Like, and then also acting like, there were no electric cars until now. It's like when they first started making cars, there were electric cars. They got to stop fucking saying that. These fucking idiots don't know what they're talking about. The thing, and they're sitting there nitpicking. They're making these videos where they're pushing down on the dashboard of the Tesla and it's making all of these haunted house sounds. And it's like, they're just throwing those sound effects in there. Because what else are they going to say about it? It can, well, no matter how fast your thousand horsepower thing is, you're not going to be faster than a fucking electric car. So now they're just nitpicking. Like your ex-girlfriend when you're showing up with another hottie, you know? 
she doesn't look good in that dress. That, like, that's what the fuck gas com- like, And then what kills me is no one's saying you can't have a gas combustion car. Nobody's saying that shit. That's it, all right? You'll be fine. And I think whatever car you have will be grand. Even if they all of a sudden just said, like, you have to, because of the fucking global warming, you got to do this shit. I think if you have, like, a, 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 a gas combustion car, especially a classic, they're not going to fuck with you. You'll be grandfathered in. Like, you know, they didn't just tell everybody in the NHL to wear a helmet. It was like, after this year, you have to fucking wear a helmet. That's how it went. You know, I don't know. I think there'll still be a certain percentage of gas combustion cars on the, on the road. Like, I, that's never going to go away. It's too much a part and a really cool part of, of uh, what makes this country awesome. is people fucking working on their cars and trying to figure out a way to make it a little faster, a little fucking cooler, a little lower, a little higher, all of that shit. So I don't think it's going anywhere. So, but if you're, if you're sitting there like, and you don't know shit about electric cars, do not believe any of this crap that they're saying about the, they just turn on and then they blow up and they burn down a house. It's all fucking, it's, it's, that's coming from oil companies and, 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 and people that don't sell fucking electric cars, but they're here. They're going to be here. They're fast as shit. <clears throat> sort of boring to look at. The Porsche one's cool. I'll tell you that, that fucking check out that, um, that, um, lucid one, like the high end, Coop man looked fucking badass. It, it it definitely looked like a man's car, and it had a nice front end. That's my big thing with a lot of electric cars. I don't like the front ends, but like the, this one was cool. It had wraparound light that looked fucking cool, like you were in Blade Runner or some shit. Um, and I don't know why you'd have a problem with something that could have four fucking people in it and a trunk full of fucking groceries front and back and still beat a Corvette off the line. I mean, that's fucking wild. It's kind of the best of both worlds. You get to buy the dad car and you still get to go fast. Maybe kill your whole family. You know, I'm kind of concerned about that new Tesla that goes 150 miles an hour. It's a fucking missile. And, and like the amount of people that just suck at driving. I mean, that could, that could be, uh, I don't know. Why does it go 150 miles an hour? <laughs> anyway, so uh, I saw the Ford Lightning. I finally got to sit in that truck. That thing was cool. Um, the frunk where the engine was, there's a whole other area where you can just put shit, which is fucking unreal. And then in there, listen to this shit. They had four three-pronged outlets and then these, and like two or three of those little ones for like iPads and your phone and shit. It's fucking unbelievable. Um, and they're saying that the truck, if you lose, you can actually use it as a generator to fucking... Put the lights on in your house for a couple, two, three days. That's a pretty good truck, right? I mean, I know it doesn't make the noise and everything. Listen, I'm not. Like, all I'm saying here is, is stop hating on electric cars. All right, stop buying this bullshit that they're these pieces of shit that fucking burn down your house. They don't. All right, that's just people who don't like change or they're gonna lose money if these things stick. They're here to stay, and if you like a gas combustion engine, just fucking buy that. You know, like what is the fucking problem? Um, I kind of like them both, but like, uh, I gotta be honest with you. I definitely like the, the old school shit. So, um, when we went downstairs, uh, there was this whole custom area and that's where it had all like the, uh, the low riders and that whole sh- all of that shit and the fucking bikes and all of that. Um, that whole all that whole Latino culture and the, the fucking sick ass detail on the paint, motorcycles. I saw this Harley that was detailed so ridiculously. And as I was like videoing it, it was sort of across the room. I was looking at this helmet and I was like, is that like a motorcycle helmet that looks like a Dodgers baseball hat? And I went up and that's what it was. And uh, I did take a picture of it, but the way they had the bikes and everything lit up, it really fucked with your phone so it doesn't look good. It was like that thing alone, just the helmet and the amount of time and effort that was taken on that <clears throat> was a work of art. And like the level that Mexicans go when they paint a fucking car. I mean, they detail the firewall under the hood 
under the trunk. They don't fuck around. It's unbelievable. And some of them, it's like they got so many layers of paint. You feel like you could put your hand, like it looks like water. Um, so my daughter was loving all of that stuff and the, and the bicycles and all of that. And then some, you know, you know, the classic ones that they, that you always see low riders like uh, Impalas. Um, and then uh, interestingly enough, like those town cars from the early 90s. Um, that was cool. And they had the trunks open and they had the whole, that whole system in the back that makes it go up and down, which I don't even understand. That was all fucking cool. And then we went up and I went to the dark side. I went to the Chevy area and I was like, oh, I don't want to go in here as a Ford guy. What if I like the fucking Silverado or whatever? But uh, I checked out their trucks. They look cool. I like the colors of some of them, but I'm just, I don't know. There's something about the interiors and the front grills. I'm just not into them. But I, I will say I love the square body Chevys and... I like the early 60s ones where that that generation, that generation sixth generation of the Ford F100 I'm not into. I like the seventh generation. I like the 55 Ford. I like a 1940 Ford. Is this just going to be a fucking car podcast? I think it is. Um, anyway, so we, we did that. Let me, uh, let me do some reads here. Oh, Jesus. Half a fucking hour on that shit. Um, I haven't even got... No, wait. I haven't even gotten into what the fuck I wanted to talk about. So... Um, what did I just do here? Go back to that recording. It's still recording. All right. So I um, have been smoking cigars and drinking coffee like a fucking fiend. Like, a, like, like I'm running a newspaper. I feel like that's what they used to do. Like, come on, you got to make the deadline. Another cup of coffee and they're just smoking since the end of July. And I was doing this great thing where I was like taking the first 10 days off of everything. So none of my, my vices would get out of control. But then what happened was in June, you know, me and my wife's birthdays are in the first two weeks. So I was like, well, you know, let's just take, I'll, I'll do the 10 days at the end of the month, which of course I didn't do. And then July came, I started to do it. And then it was July 4th weekend. And then I didn't do that. Then August, we were on vacation the first couple weeks of August, September, I was in Europe. And then October, I'm on a bus trip. And I just fucking, somewhere in the end of July, I just took the hand, my hands off the wheel of my life as far as my vices, which is basically cigars and coffee. And um, I've been trying to stop, but like, I feel like my touring schedule and getting ready to promote old dads and all of that, I just had a lot on my mind and I just couldn't kind of stop the merry-go-round. So Thanksgiving night, my daughter came and she went to sit next to me right after I smoked a cigar and she made a face. And usually she goes, oh my God, dad, stop smoking cigars. And she didn't. She just made the face and then didn't say anything. And I was like, I don't like that. She's used to me smelling like a fucking ashtray. So I was like, fuck this. I'm not smoking cigars. Uh, Got to take a break, right? So then the next morning I woke up and we had a friend over, family friend, um, one of Nia's friends, and I made her a cappuccino. And then I was going to make myself one. I was like, you know what? Why don't I just not have coffee today? I know I'm going to get a little bit of a headache. Let me just fucking shut that down too. And just, just for today. All right. I'm not saying I'm not drinking coffee. Just not going to do it today. I know the headache's coming. Let's just see how bad the headache is. <clears throat> Let's just see how addicted to caffeine I am. Oh, my God, dude. Around 1 o'clock, it started coming on, and it was fine. But then by 3 o'clock, it was like, what the, f what is this, right? And from 3 to about, I don't know, 5.30, 6 o'clock, I had a pounding fucking headache. And I was just sitting there, like, just laying on the couch, like, wow. How much fucking coffee have I been drinking that, like, 24 hours without it, this is what's happening? So, I, you know, I made up my mind. I'm a stubborn fuck, so I just plowed through it. <laughs> Nia's hilarious. She's going, like, what? <laughs> what's the matter? What's the matter? And I'm like, I, I'm not drinking coffee today. I got a splitting headache. She's like... Well, go have a cup of coffee. <laughs> Why would you do that to yourself, you know? 
And um, I'm like, no, I just, I just got to do this. I need to like, I need to like, you know, I got to fucking, I got to get off the fucking merry-go-round here for a second. Got to see where I'm at. So then she goes, well, at least drink a bunch of water. So I started doing that and I started feeling better. And, uh, and it was amazing, right? You know, it sucked that day. But the next day I woke up, you know, I felt good. And I had no desire to drink coffee. So I said, fuck it, I'm not drinking coffee. I'm certainly not smoking a cigar. And then I woke up today, Sunday. I said, yeah, you know, I'm not fucking doing this shit. And you know what? All of a sudden now I'm like, you know what? I want to get back into reading. I want to get back into studying French. You know, I haven't stretched in a minute. I need to go to the gym. Like, I need to take care of myself. Like, what the fuck was I doing? I was on that, like, for those of you in the music business or whatever you do where you tour, you know when you just sort of get into that... uh you know, it's like that fetal position where you're just, you're out there surviving, you know, and you got your little vices that kind of get you through. Like, let me just, yeah, okay, okay, what do I got to do? All right, do they got caught? Let me just get a cup of coffee. If I just get a cup of coffee, okay. They'll, or they got, they got an area where you can smoke a cigar and it's like, fine. So I let the whole thing just really get out of control. But um, fortunately, I'm not like a full on fucking addict. I am a habit guy. So I am able in moments of like, you know, seeing my daughter making a face and not pulling away. And I, I, that registers with me. I go, I don't like that. And I'm able to say, fuck this. And, but then I don't have to get a sponsor and go to meetings or anything like that. I'm somewhere, you know, let's say it's a speedometer, you know, when the car can go 120 miles an hour. As far as my addictive shit, I'm about an 80, I'm going about 80, 85. I'm definitely getting a speeding ticket. (laughs) So, you know, I had the splitting headache on Friday. On Saturday, I woke up and I was like, you know, I feel like I need the foam roller and I need to stretch all those airplane and bus miles off of me here. Let's turn this around. Flexibility was for shit. And, um, but I definitely felt better, played a little bit of drums. And then I went, uh, and then this morning I woke up and I felt good. You know, I stretched right when I woke up and I made the kids breakfast as I always do. And I knew I was going to the car show. I said, fuck this. I'm going to the gym. So I just did like a half hour and elliptical, just get the blood flowing. And, uh, and now I'm back and I'm fucking reading again. I've been reading, uh, Reggie Watts wrote an autobiography about growing up in great falls and, you know, his whole journey to become one of the most, I don't know, just one of the most interesting people I've ever seen on stage. So I've been reading that. And uh, I'm still watching Kojak and shit, but like, you know, I got to have something, right? But I sort of redefined my back porch. That was the place where I just had a fucking espresso and a cigar. And I kept saying to myself, like, what do you want to do, Bill? You want to get better at smoking cigars and drinking coffee? You want to get better at French? You could be playing drums right now and all of this shit. So anyway, um... That's where the fuck I'm at. So uh, I'm going to try to, uh, I don't know like, know like how long I'm going to go this time. But um, I mean, I would gotten it down to like two cups of coffee a day. I'd have a cappuccino in the morning and then in the afternoon, sorry to Italian people listening. I know I'm not supposed to have dairy after 11 in your world. Um, but uh I couldn't believe it. So I was kind of like, I need to like, that, that fuck, that needs to fucking simmer down there. It was not a healthy relationship if I have that level of a fucking headache. So, um, and then cigars have always been, I, I just need to go about five days. Five days, I don't give a fuck. Like, as far as like not doing it right now, like Friday and Saturday were easy. Today's the first day I was kind of like, well, what am I going to do now? I came back from the car show. I usually at this point go out on the back porch and I lo- I loved it. You know, I'd smoke a cigar and I always, you know, call my friends back East, get caught up and shit. And, uh, I was just like, well, you know what you can do instead of wasting all that time fucking, you know, hurting yourself with your vices. Why don't you go record your podcast and knock it out there while your son takes a nap. So that's what I'm doing. So anyway, oh, Bill, you know, I'm just going to try to like take care of myself a little bit more. Um, 
in this next year. That's, that is what I would like to do. And uh, speaking of taking care of you, oh, would you look who it is? It's Stamps.com, everybody. You know, did you forget to add Stamps.com to your holiday wish list last year? We all make mistakes. Stamps.com has been helping businesses like yours save time and money during the holiday rush for 25 years with easy access to USPS and UPS services and premium rates for all your postage needs. The holidays are hard enough. Make things easier than ever with Stamps.com. You've heard me talk about Stamps.com. They've been sponsoring the show for over nine years now. And if you haven't tried it, what the fuck are you waiting for? With Stamps.com, all you need is a computer and a printer. They even send you a free scale. So you'll have everything you need to get started. Now, taking care of orders on the go is even easier with Stamps.com's mobile app. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. And if you sell products online, don't worry. Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. Running low, order shipping and mailing supplies labels, and even printers from the supply store. Get huge carrier discounts up to 84, 84% off USPS and UPS rates to help your bottom line. Plus, Stamps.com automatically tells you <clears throat> uh, your cheapest and fastest shipping op- option. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Get access to the USPS and UPS services you need right from your computer anytime, day or night. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. Give your business the gift of Stamps.com so your mailing and shipping is covered this holiday season. Sign up with the promo code BURR for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus Free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and enter Burr, B-U-R-R. I got a buddy of mine from back in my uh, junior high and high school days. uh, Tells me, you know, he gives me the heads up. His, His call every week, gambling, is the Iowa Hawkeyes under. I was hanging with them in Vegas. The over-under was 27 and a, and a half, and it came in. So he texts me before Saturday. He goes, look at the, look at the under for the Iowa, over-under. It was 25 and a half. It was the lowest under in college football history, I believe. And uh, it came in. I think the final score was 13 to 10. Iowa over the Nebraska Cornhuskers. I mean, that's just fucking unbelievable. So there you go. Do with, do with that information what you will. All right, now here we go. Um, <clears throat> oh, look at this email. This is about the movie Leo, which has been killing. My kids love it when, when Leo gets all started. He goes, when he fucking, whatever that thing Sandler does, it's just fucking hilarious. Um, Turtle. Yeah, I play Squirtle the Turtle. Uh, hey, Billy Shellshock. Great job as the turtle. Would love for them to leak your sound booth outtakes. Keep trucking. Go fuck yourself. They actually, um, I think Netflix put out a quick one on the day that I actually got in the booth with Adam, which was uh, which was awesome and difficult trying not to laugh because he's fucking hilarious. He is effortlessly, effortlessly funny. And... Uh, had a good time with him, Robert Smigel, and everybody over there. So um, I've gotten so much positive feedback over that. I mean, I've had him have a nice little run here. Old Dads did great. Leo's doing great. The Club Soda Kenny. You guys keep watching that Club Soda Kenny and you keep sharing it. It gets enough views. Someone's going to put some money behind it. And you can see a movie <laughs> starring Club Soda Kenny. I mean, tell me the world doesn't need that. I think they do. Um, and I, when we had the best fucking time shooting that thing, we had such a good time. I have a good time on everything that I do because I, I always, I, I work with, I work, you know, don't believe all this shit that you hear about electric cars. Don't believe all this shit you hear about Hollywood people. There's a lot of fucking cool ass people out here that are fun to work with. And I've been lucky enough to uh, pretty much, you know, I've only worked with a couple of cunts. Other than that, everybody else has been aces. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shampoos. Oh no, you're gonna ask me about shampoos? Jesus Christ, what do I know about those? 
Huh? F maybe for my undercarriage. Oh, geez. Uh, shampoos. Bill, I've been reading about chemicals and products that do the opposite of what they're supposed to do. There are books on this that stem less from a conspiratorial angle and more from the designed obsolescence phenomenon of the last 50 to 60 years. Well, look no further than fucking Apple. Apple sabotages their own products. In the history of like design obsolescence, I don't think the technology ever existed where the company you bought a product from could then, from a distance, fuck that product over so you'd have to come back and buy another one. Uh, shampoos have sulfates, parabens, chlorides, and a host of other chemicals. Some have a purpose. Okay, let's say you want to lessen the grease in your naturally greasy hair. You would use sulfates. Sulfates are used as engine degreasers. Uh, it may aid in this one area. Is you supposed to say may? It may aid in this one area. Okay, but ultimately because causes you to lose or thin your hair out. As they say in the medical community, there is no free lunch. Johnson & Johnson and other companies own both the shampoo conditioner products that cause these things and also their hair treatment products as well. Suspect yet effective business plan. Guys, this is, this is why I'm telling you, blue ties and red ties, they're not watching any of these people. Can you imagine going out there and deliberately making somebody go fucking bald? Wait a minute. What shampoo did I use? Um, maybe you shouldn't have spent so many nights, oh, there it is, washing your hair in the 70s. <laughs> uh, shit. Um, well, I didn't, actually. I, I, we grew up, we didn't have a lot of fucking, you know, we had a period there where we were struggling. So my mother used to wash our hair like once a week. Once a week, you'd stick your head in the kitchen sink. You get those fucking nails going. You'd be like covering your eyes because of the, so the soap would go in your eyes. It would hurt back then before they fucking practiced on all those rabbits. Um, yeah, that's how it was. That was how it was in the seventies. Hand me down clothes. You wash your hair once a week. You went outside. You fucking ran around. A stick was a gun. It's a simpler fucking time. And you know what? A cleaner planet. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not with the bad emissions back then. Uh, diet. Dear Billy Dixie Chick. <laughs> About a week ago, you asked the advice on what diet actually works. I found out in March that I have type 2 diabetes. It shocked me. I was 5 feet 10 and only 305 pounds. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I was eating like a dick for years, plus it runs in the family. I should have paid more attention to it more than I did. Well, type 2 is reversible, isn't it? I believe that's reversible. So, uh, My mother has it as well, but was able to manage it by eating more protein. St she still uses medication, though, to lower her blood sugars. I started to, to research what I could do, and I came across Dr. David Unwin, a GP, I guess general practitioner, practitioner in England. He had a few webinars on using a keto diet to control type 2 diabetes without any medication. My doctor didn't prescribe me any medication initially, either to gauge where I was at when I first was monitoring my diet. Anyway, I went full keto. Apart from a, from a serving of vegetables every day for lunch, it was basically carnivore. After three months my HbA1, the measurement of sugar attached to red blood cells, which was 9.2, was now down to 5.7, which is 0.1 above non-diabetic levels. Blood pressure, pressure and cholesterol has dropped to all to within normal levels. Oh, and I lost 50 pounds. Wow, good for you, man. Keep going. I'm still not taking any medication. And in fact, the doctor hasn't asked me back in again in about six months now. I can eat a little bit of carbs now too because it works, because how it works is removing fat around your organs, which puts pressure on them 
making them not work properly. Still watching the diet and blood sugars, though. Honestly, reading about it and other people's success stories with it, I thought it too good to be true, but it worked for me. Just thought I'd send you this before you get canceled. <laughs> good luck and go fuck yourself. Um, why would I get canceled? I, like I always said, my career is, is the punishment. Anybody who gets canceled inevitably tries their hand at doing stand-up on the fucking road, uh, which was, you know, wasn't offensive. It was just more sad to me. Like, wait a minute. I thought I was, I'm, I'm the bottom rung? Oh, I thought I was doing well. All right, underrated, everybody. Reading the, stru- the instructions and living lean. Uh, hey, Billy, I finally started reading instructions in my 30s. Yeah, I know. It just takes so much fucking patience, but it's never... It always goes better. It always goes better. You know, when you're assembling something, you should read the whole fucking thing and then go back because there's always one thing. Make sure that you did this or that'll fuck this step up. If you just start assembling it, you know, it always goes wrong. All right, underrated, reading instructions and living lean. Hey, Bill, I finally started reading instructions in my 30s. That, that's, you're like a prodigy. It only took you to your 30s to do that? It took me to my 50s. It's amazing what knowing how something works can do for your life. I even watched a few videos on the iPhone capabilities no one knows exist that are useful. I've also taken your advice and stopped taking on more junk. I've thinned the herd of material possessions and I'm on my way to being a three guitar, one skateboard, laptop, phone, uh, 10 of my favorite books and clothes for the seasons. I can move anywhere in one car trip. I feel invincible. Dude, that's, that's amazing, man. Like if I could go back and talk to my younger self, the amount of shit that... I, that I, I'm just looking around my office now. And I'll tell you what's funny is if you start doing well in life, people ask you if you want stuff and you say no and they still send it to you. And then you got to like try to, how do I get rid of this? I don't have room for this. I had a buddy of mine ask me, he goes, hey man, they got this new Bruin zip up. Dude, you want it? I said, no, dude, I have too much Bruin shit. I just did comics come home. They gave me more Bruin stuff. I got too much Bruin shit. He goes, all right, cool. And he fucking sent it to me anyway. <laughs> And guess this is the best part. It's the wrong size. So now I don't feel guilty. Because I, I saw it. I was like, all right. He gave it to me. He gave me a nice card. I go, I got to wear it. I got to wear it. Plus, I love wearing sports shit because Nia hates my sports shit. She goes, you're too old to be wearing that stuff. You look like a fucking gym coach. It's just like, you know, well, we, 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 what the fuck do you got on? Huh? Cruella DeVille? Get the fuck out of here. You're going to sit there and keep, you know, dressing all fancy? I can dress like a fucking... A fucking uh, gym coach. Oh, my God. I thought the fucking M on my refrigerator came off. That was really going to annoy me. Um, anyway, I... Uh, yeah, I have so much fucking shit. I got a little travel guitar. I have not used that fucking thing in forever. You know, I got this little fucking flight simulator X-Plane 11 thing. Anybody going for their instrument rating? You want this fucking thing? You can have it. I'll fucking ship it to you. Free of charge. Reach out to Andrew Themelis. Um, you, who wants to travel guitar? There we go. Just getting those couple of things out of here. I got all of these books. I'm getting rid of these books because I'm never going to fucking read them again. There's just a few that I love that I'm going to keep. And then I'll have a place to put my records because my records are on the floor. Why did I buy all these fucking records? What am I, a DJ? Am I Quest Love? Do I have a fucking gig I got to do? No, I don't. And I got my little high five fucking radio killer fucking thing out here. Why do I have this? I never listen to this shit. I'm going to listen to this when my kids move out in fucking 20 years. But I can't do it now. I can't be out here in the garage. All of my shit is in the fucking garage. Um... Which makes sense, because if it didn't, it, our house would be weird. Yeah. Just the shit I have on the fucking walls. <laughs> Just look at John Bonham, Bobby Orr, ACDC, Dr. J. It's helicopters. What am I? 
fucking eight years old? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, anyway, so still have a slight fucking headache. I'm not going to lie to you, dude. I was fucking crushing. C- cigars, I was doing one a day, which isn't good. But I was fucking crushing coffee. On bad days, I would have like three cappuccinos. On really bad days, three cappuccinos and a double espresso. Like I know you guys are all going, dude, what the fuck? It's just like, you know what it is? I don't have, there's an, I don't have anything else. Like, I don't know what to do when I'm sitting with other people. I need something to do. And I started thinking, why do I need something to do? I have something to do. Go to bed or just fucking sit there and drink a water. I think I was just like used to drinking, you know? fucking bend in the elbow, you know? So that became cigars and it became like fucking coffee. All right? You know what? I'm going to keep my fucking hands down. (laughs) Hands down here for, I don't know, I'm going to go like 10 days, see how this works out and then maybe I'll go a little bit longer. Um, I don't know. I will tell you, I did not appreciate that fucking headache whatsoever. That information really let me know how fucking, uh, Because I definitely have people like, dude, you're drinking another one? If I was doing that, I couldn't go to sleep. It's like, dude, I'm a fucking ginger. I'm weird. I can drink a double espresso and go to bed within an hour and sleep eight hours and not even have weird dreams. Sugar's a different thing. And I don't like fucking weed either. That There's a thing right there. Dude, fuck weed. Whatever it is now. You know, they talk, you know, like Kip was talking about earlier, what the fuck is in shampoo? Let me ask you a question. What the fuck is in weed right now? Those stupid gummies? What are those crystals on it? Sugar? You putting sugar? You know something? Sugar is for fucking pussies. Why are they going to make everything taste good? They want it to be addictive is what it is. But like, you know, do you remember eating like pot brownies when you were younger? I mean, you tasted the fucking weed. You were like, God damn. It's like you're eating a shrub. You fucking tasted it. You're like, I am eating fucking marijuana. I'm eating marijuana, you know? Eat a gummy. It's like, I don't know what this is. Is this like fucking glue? Then they put that little bit of those crystals on it. Like, I have no fucking idea what that stuff is. And then all these different strains. Like, this one makes you creative. This one makes you fucking chill. This one's like, let's get fucked up. And hey, we're going to build a house on this one. It's just like, weed used to just be weed. So like, are they doing what they always do? Are they playing God now? Are they fucking with the DNA of the fucking marijuana plant? And at some point, you know, when some Monsanto group is going to own all the fucking seeds to weed. And if you fucking are growing it, that's what's going to be. We're in the golden age of being a weed farmer as far as like it's still you can be a private person and do it. I guarantee you pretty soon some corporation's going to come in and own all of it and it's going to fucking suck. And then you're going to have to go to a farmer's market to get the organic stuff, man. And then half of that shit is going to be the corporate shit that they weren't worked their way in. Have you seen that shit about those organic fucking uh, products and those organic supermarkets you go in there? Like most of them are already mainstream brands and all they do is they take a couple of ingredients out and then they're considered organic. Gee, I wondered how that happened. They paid off politicians. They have people in the FDA that used to work for them and they just pass it through and you think that you're getting away from their cancerous, horrible shit and they're still feeding it to you. You will eat our stuff. It's fucking unbelievable. It's unbelievable how out of control they are. And then... They, they spend more time trying to figure out who's on steroids in baseball than they do what these fucking cunts are feeding. Oh, I'm on a fucking stump. All right. Anyway, this is the podcast, everybody. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Um, this is the Monday morning podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, I actually feel uh, really good feel really good, man. I feel fucking like I slowed it down. Like I'm going to try to remember this the next time it gets out of control because that's just who I am. What, am I never going to smoke another cigar? Huh? What, am I never going to go to Central America and do a hit for the FBI like I've been doing for these years? No. Imagine if that I had that whole other side of me. 
you know, we're going to have you hide in plain sight as a stand-up comedian. Uh, you know, I don't think I want to do that. No, just trust us. Just hang on. We'll write your jokes. You just go out like the Manchurian candidate and you just say the fucking jokes, okay? And then once every five to six years, we're going to call you up and there's going to be another beautiful country in South America that we're going to go down and fuck with and try to take the natural resources, you know? And then when they push back, we'll claim that they're, you know, anti-American. Whatever. We'll figure it out. But we need you to go down. There's a guy down there that actually cares about his own people and we would like you to go down there and eliminate him because we can't have that. Um, anyway, all right, that's, uh, that's the podcast, everybody. Um, go fuck yourselves and I will check in on you in a couple of days.